Okay, so today we're gonna to be going over making long cuts with the Festool track saw. We're working on a walnut countertop, and these are 10 and a half foot, eight quarter walnut boards. This is a 118 inch or 10 foot track, so you can see we're running up pretty short here. So one of the handy features with the Festool track system is that you can connect multiple rails together to get a longer run without having to get a rail that is a full length. For this particular project, uh, I think putting this 800 millimeter rail on here is going to be plenty. Um, since Festool is a German company, things are in millimeters. So uh, 3,000 is 118 inches. Uh, this 800 is, uh, I believe, 42 inches. But what we're going to do is get these little uh, connectors here. I've already got this one set up on the short rail. Start off by flipping your rail over so that the bottom side's facing up. We're going to slide these into the groove. And you notice when I lock everything together here, there's no gap. You want to leave just a little bit of a gap. So something about a sixteenth of an inch. And that's going to allow you to adjust this to get the whole system square and uh, true. If this rail is together, you can't adjust it at all. So give yourself a little bit of a gap. Tighten down these screws just hand tight, just enough so they stop. If you wrench them down, it'll put a divot in the top of the rail and bump the track saw as it rides along. You'll have to hammer that out with a little hammer. I speak from experience because I've done that before. Uh, so we've got a little gap there. Now flip the track over. At this point, we just have one rail connecting the track. So you can see we can still move it. There's still some flex in there. So what I'm gonna do is use my additional track to get our track square. You can use a level or straight edge. Make sure you have something that's fairly long. Even just a couple fractions of a degree off will leave a considerable amount of gap in a glue joint. I'm happy where that is. So I'm gonna go ahead and snug these screws down. Remember just a little bit. Uh, once I've got that done, check it again. I've got a little bit of play in there, so um, I must have moved something. We're going to readjust it again. Don't rush this process. It's important to get it just right. Otherwise, you'll pay in the end when your glue joint's off. All right, that's something I can work with. Now we've got enough track to uh, cut our piece of wood here. So we'll go ahead and get started with that. You'll notice we're going to leave a little bit of overlap on either end of our workpiece. That's necessary because the track saw has to ride on this rail uh, and you have to be able to drop the blade down before entering the cut to get your best quality cut. You can start off on the end and plunge it, but it's not going to be as square as it would be if you start here and then enter your cut. Uh, and the reason we've got this overlap is because our guides for the track saw ride here and here. These tension it down so that it doesn't drift or wobble at all. And those have got to be on this center groove. If one of them is off the groove, the track saw will wobble back and forth as we enter our cut. And you'll have a slight gap in your glue joint at the very end. Looking at some of the anatomy of the track, uh, on the bottom side, we have neoprene strips, which really stick to the work surface, uh, keep the track from sliding around, uh, makes it very stable. Also, we've got our, our chip guard here, which is a piece of soft plastic. The blade will actually cut that with your first cut, and then on consecutive cuts, it adds a zero clearance between the saw blade and your work piece. That way, when your blade hook comes up, it sandwiched between this chip guard and the piece of wood, you will have less likelihood of having a chip or tear out, so you'll have real crisp, clean cuts. Okay, so I've got my track positioned. Uh, you don't have to use clamps on a track. It just adds an extra level of uh, precision and safety in case the track gets bumped or moved mid-cut. You don't throw your whole, your whole joint off. Um, these are the quick connect clamps, very handy. They slide in the bottom, same groove that the track connectors slide in. You just want to lock them down snug. All right, so now that we've got our track set, we're going to talk about some basics of the saw. 
Uh, just covering some saw blade. We have two different kinds here. This is gonna be a ripping blade. Um, it's a uh, 16 tooth. So this works great for doing rip cuts, uh, either with the grain or across the grain. Uh, it's not gonna be a glue quality edge, but it works great for doing real fast cuts. This is a universal blade. Uh, it's a 36 tooth, and this works great for doing glue quality edges. To do blade changes is very easy on this tool. Uh, it comes with the hex wrench. You'll pull your fast fix lever out. Make sure your depth stop is all the way down. Of course, make sure the saw is not plugged in. Plunge it down. Uh, you'll notice that it locks into place and the blade is secured as well. So this is our hex key for taking our blade off. Um, here's a brand new blade we put on. Like so, put our washer down, our hex nut, get it snugged up, and just turn it until it stops. Next, we can flip our lever back, locks our saw down, and that's probably about the easiest blade change you'll do in any saw that you own. As I mentioned earlier, you have your depth stop here. Uh, this adjusts how far the saw plunges, so I can go just a little ways, or I can go down the full depth of the saw. And this will plunge two and seven eighths inch. Setting the depth on our track saw is really handy. It's also very important, uh, especially if I'm cutting on the surface. Uh, I don't want to actually cut through all the way. If I've dropped my saw down the full length, um, I would run the risk of severing my piece. What I can do here is set the saw off to the side of the guide rail, plunge your blade down until it makes contact with your work surface. Uh, and then just pull your depth stop up till it contacts the, uh, the detent pin here. Now it's gonna stop. Um, I'm barely catching right there. That's okay. <clears throat> I might just barely skim this, but I'm not gonna damage it. Now move the saw back over to your rail position um, and you'll be ready to cut. A Couple more things. You have your bevel adjustment here uh, with your degrees. There's also one in the back to lock it into place. This plastic device here uh, is meant to slide on your guide rail. If you're gonna be cutting up to a point and you wanna stop, you can lock this into place so that your stall will hit that and stop. This would be great for doing like a counter top cutout for a sink. Uh, you don't wanna go past a certain point. You get this all measured and figured out. Just set your stop here and that way you're not gonna go past it. Here's your dust port. For the saw to work properly and with the dust extraction systems hooked up, uh, it's important to have a, some sort of vacuum hooked up to here. The standard Festool vacuums come with a 27 millimeter hose. This one fits the smaller tools. It'll also fit inside this uh, dust port fitting. The saw works better with the 36 millimeter hose, which is considerably larger. Uh, it has a bigger fitting here, and this actually fits over. So it's backwards compatible, which is handy. I find that most of the time I use a saw, I'll just use a smaller hose. I do have a little bit more chips that come out than I would if I used the 36 millimeter hose, but in the environment I'm working in, it's not really detrimental to have that. All right, so now that we've got everything ready to cut, what I like to do before I actually start cutting my glue joint, kind of take a dry run on the track, make sure that I don't have any problems. Uh, make sure your track's real clean. If there's sawdust or even tiny particles on there, they can jam in these adjustment cams that keep the saw tight. Uh, and if you ever run it on the track and all of a sudden the saw just locks up and it won't go anywhere, usually that's because a piece of dust or something has gotten caught in those cams. Um, and the dust extraction really helps prevent that. When I plunge my saw down, um, the end of the track's gonna bend just a little bit. You can either support that, or just be mindful of that when we enter our cut. Don't put too much downward pressure uh, and bend that track. Otherwise, that's gonna bevel the blade just a tiny bit um, and leave a tiny bit of a glue joint gap at the very end of your workpiece. When we're doing our cut, it's very important to have even downward pressure on the saw. It cuts very straight, but 
if I change the, the angles of pressure on it, it's gonna cause that blade to change its bevel just slightly. And so that's gonna be a little detrimental on your glue joint. Make sure you hold the hose up so that it doesn't catch. Uh, you can do this yourself, have someone hold it for you. Uh, just make sure that it's not gonna get hung up on the track halfway through a cut. Looks like we're ready to go here, so we'll go ahead and uh, see what happens. Okay, it looks like that went really well. If you'll notice, while the saw blade was cutting this strip off here, I had hardly any dust thrown out. Right about here or so, I was kind of going more towards a skim cut, so the blade was not sandwiched between the wood. I had a lot more uh, sawdust getting thrown out from the saw. That's normal um, because the normal contour of the blade would suck the sawdust up and then the dust vacuum would get it if it was sandwiched in between this wood here. There's not that there if you have just a skim cut going on, that sawdust gets thrown everywhere. At the very end of your cut, uh, be careful pulling your saw up because as you pull it up, you're going to be changing the amount of pressure you have on it and that can bevel your blade just a little bit. I like to just leave it exactly where it was, let the blade spin down uh, before I pull it up. Uh, if you pull your saw up like this and you hear a little bit of a zing sound when it's just nicking off a little bit there, again, you're gonna have just a little bit of gap on the end of your glue joint. When you're cutting thicker stock, it's usually okay to plunge the saw the full thickness of the stock and just do it in one pass. Some problems you might encounter is if you have tension in the wood and the wood is actually sandwiching the blade, uh, that's gonna cause it to bind up and it's gonna appear that the saw is binding down. Uh, as you saw here, we had a brand new blade. It was really sharp. It, we had eight quarter, two inch walnut. We just made one full thickness pass through it and didn't have any problems with the saw bogging down. Let the saw do the work, don't push it. Uh, if you load your blade too much with uh, pressure from the saw, uh, it can warble just a little bit and it'll leave some little lines and grooves in your cut um, and you'll have to come back and trim that off. So just light, even pressure. Uh, if your saw starts binding up, basically you either have a dull blade or you've got tension in the wood, which would warrant doing multiple passes. But in the case that we've got a very stable piece of wood, you can do it in just one pass. And I've done uh, very thick walnut before, pecan, hardwoods, really usually shouldn't be a problem if your blade is sharp. So that pretty much wraps it up for doing long cuts. We'll show a few more cuts here before we wrap the video up. But uh, the track saw is very handy, especially for doing longer cuts. It'd be really hard to run a 10, 10 and a half foot board through a jointer, unless you had a really big one or a massive outfeed table. You probably aren't gonna get the quality of cut you can get with this saw. Uh, again, you saw how easy it was to set up to make our cut. Uh, we don't have to worry about going back and trimming stuff or fixing things up or planing our joint by hand. It's ready to glue up. So that pretty much wraps up making long cuts with the track saw. We thank you for watching our videos and be sure to hit the subscribe button.